Hi, welcome to the second part of this series of videos on plans for RC airplanes. In this video, we're going to take a look on how to interpret plans, how to read them and all of that. So let's jump into it. So here I have the plans of a glider I'm building right now. Uh, it's the Riser 100, which is 100 inches in wingspan or 2.5 meters. And this sheet of, or roll of paper, it's the size, it's a standard size, it's A0 size which is the largest standard size you can get when printing plans. Uh, you can, of course, print larger ones in length. A0, it's uh, great for printing, you know, the whole wing section or, you know, the, the whole fuselage. Like in this case, you can see that the, the whole fuselage, it's represented in here, uh, the whole wing uh, and all of that. So it's very big. Let me show you so you can have an idea on how big an A0 is. And then we have the other sizes, which are A1, which is half of this, then A2, half of A1, and so on. So why do we print the plants in large scale like this? Well, when we print um, model airplanes, plants, or technical drawings, we usually print them in the full scale of the, plan of the model, or one to one, which is the natural ratio or the actual size of the airplane. So whatever you're seeing here in these drawings is the actual scale of the model. So uh, let's take a look at the wings. These wings are, are separated in few panels that you have to build them separately because then you have the, a polyhedral and you have the inner and outer panels. So this is the left inner panel and I've been building these panels according to the instructions. And if you take the wing, I have the wing here. If you take the wing or whatever piece and, uh, and put it on top of the plants and align them, you see that they aligned perfectly to the drawings. So that's actually what should happen when you align your pieces or parts on top of your plants. They should align perfectly on top of it. So that's very helpful when you're building when you're building the wings or whatever part because you can uh, use the plants as a guide and that's really really helpful to uh, put uh, all the parts in place all the wing ribs all the spars and so on also in the plants you have notations on you know uh, describing each part what it is the measurement of course, this is the top view. So on the top view, you have uh, elements that are not, that you don't know what's the measurement of this in its vertical axis. But of course, you will see that on another drawing or in the instructions. Here you can see the thickness of the, of the wood, which is these things here. These are balsa shear web. So these elements are represented just like that because that's the view from the top. Each wing rib also is represented here with its correct thickness and everything. So that's pretty helpful when you're building your, your models. Another thing, and it's a very small detail, but you have, to, uh, you have to be careful with it, is the material of, or you know, kind of wood in this case, that it's represented with these patterns. Now, for balsa wood, we see these patterns here, here, and also, here and all of this. So this is balsa wood and you can see that because of the pattern of, of, the, of this view here. And also this is balsa wood, but this means that the, the balsa wood is rotated and it's vertical. So you are looking at its profile. So that's balsa wood, but it's vertical. It's a sheet of balsa wood in a vertical position. Same here and here and all of this. But when you see this pattern, which is different, so you have to be careful with these details, this pattern is different and that means that it's a different kind of material. In this case, it's a different kind of wood. So this is a spruce par, and here you can see the measurements. And that's actually, in real life, a spruce par. Same here, you can see this different kind of wood, and here it is. So that's very important to take, uh, to be aware of. And this is plywood. As you can see, it's, it has more lines. So the plywood will be here 
I don't have it yet because I haven't uh, I, I haven't built the other part of the wing. We also have plywood here and here but as you can see we only see a little bit of it here and we don't see it here because there are below a sheet of balsa wood that will be covering this part here. So because of that we see a dotted line meaning that this is hidden behind or under this, this balsa wood sheet. So uh, I haven't been able to do this process yet or this uh, step of the process. So whenever you see a dotted line that means that that piece is behind that and sometimes you can also see this like break it, that, that is used to show you what's behind that, what's the material or what's that. So here you can see a square balsa um, that's there but this is broken so it will be actually behind this which is also balsa. It seems complicated but it's not actually, it's just a matter of being patient and also um, taking um, you know your time to read all of that and have a little bit of what I call 3D imagination. So if I take these other plans and look at the the airfoils, here you can see the, the pattern of the wood, the sheeting of balsa wood, and more things, you know, all the things, all the elements that you have seen there. But this is the side view. So we compare this uh, W2 airfoil and we put it on top and it should fit perfectly in there. And uh, in this case, it's just a little bit out of phase. And that's because the plants sometimes get larger or shrink because of the humidity and temperature. So that's something to consider, but in this case it's about two millimeters of, yeah, of offset to even more than two millimeters, but that also depends on the cut here. So if we put it here, align it like that, yeah, it's a little bit larger, just a little bit, but it should fit correctly, almost perfectly every time. Magazines are also a great source for plants. This one in particular includes plants in almost every issue, so you have a lot of options and they come attached in the middle of the pages of a magazine. I have already deattached this one, so let's take a look at this one. The only problem with this kind of plants is that they are printed on a fragile paper, so you have to be careful not to rip it off or uh, damage it so maybe get a copy or something if you want to really make uh, the airplane of those of these plants you have two plants well actually one of them is divided in two different sheets or three different pages this one is printed in size a1 I guess yeah this this should be a1 and here we can see the same thing we have seen in the other plants and of course, it looks different, but it's basically the same thing. Here, here we can see the fuselage, position of the servos, CG location, the wing airfoils, and the other part of the fuselage, fuselage formers, and so on. And if you want to check the size, or the scale of the of the plans just take a look at one of the pieces and see the the measurement for example here it says that this part is three millimeters thick so if we take a measurement of it it should be three millimeters thick and if it is it means that the plans are in their correct scale uh, of course if this is a, a magazine they won't give you plans out of scale but just make sure that they are in the correct size and if you print plans yourself you have to make sure uh, that you have the correct uh, size or the correct scale whenever you have the final plans in hand here we can see the rest of it the horizontal stabilizer and the rest of the the wing ribs here you can see everything. And on the other side we have another model 
which is more vintage and everything is in one single plant and it's the same thing. You have to be careful when interpreting plants when everything is crowded in the same page. For example, here we can see the side view of the fuselage and then we see a top view, but we see a wheel here. So it doesn't make sense that the top view have a wheel here, right? It's like having a wheel on the side of the fuselage. But if you look at the, the wheel, it's a kind of a dotted line here. So it means that it's hidden behind this main fuselage top view. And that wheel is just part of the landing gear of the side view. But because there's not much space, they decided to put it behind or to draw it behind this main uh, top view of the, of the fuselage. This top view doesn't have anything to do with the, this wheel because this wheel is part of the side view. So you have to be careful of those kind of things. And for example, here you can see that this uh, wing rib is drawn on top of the, of the wing panel. So of course you are not going to glue a wing rib on, in there, just like in the drawing. And you can see the breaks of these uh, ribs and vertical alignment that they're broken here, meaning that this drawing doesn't have any to, anything to do with this one. But yeah, that's just something you have to be aware of. Same here. See here that actually here you can see that the wings are overlapping. The size of the wing is not this size. It's actually this much more. Same happens here with the horizontal stabilizer. It's drawn on top of the of this wing panel and part of this behind this part. So yeah, that's uh, that's also a trick that you can apply for your own drawings when you don't have too much space in the plans. So that's a great way to manage the space, but it becomes harder to identify everything because everything is really crowded and not easy to, to read. Whenever I print plans for, for myself, uh, I like to put a scale reference in here. So if the printing goes wrong or something, I would know that the scale is not right right away. Uh, you can also measure, you know, one of the pieces that you know that should be uh, a specific measurement. This is how we conclude the second part. In the third part, we're going to talk about how to digitize plans. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.